Welcome to the first ever PAC USA Student Film Fest. First of all, a big thanks to the U.S. Embassy Islamabad for funding this entire project. We couldn't have done any of this without their support. My name is Elizabeth Black and I work at Global Ties U.S. I'm joined today by my colleague Bjorn Schwarzenbach. We'll be your host for today's program. We're so excited for you all to join us to celebrate the culmination of this virtual exchange between U.S. and Pakistani high school students. A special hello to all the program participants tuning in. We'd love to hear about your favorite part of the exchange in the comments. So Bjorn, could you tell us a little bit about who we're gonna hear from and what we're gonna see today? Sure thing, Elizabeth. So during the event today, we'll hear from Global Ties US and Beyond the Classroom, our two implementing organizations of the exchange program. We'll then see some examples of student work from throughout the exchange. We'll also hear from Marsha Law Outlaw of the US Embassy Islamabad before getting to the reason we're all here today to see the US and Pakistani finalist vi uh, student videos and hearing who won. And to close out our live stream, we'll then hear from Dr. Catherine Brown, President and CEO of Global Ties US, who'll join us for some closing remarks. What an exciting lineup, Bjorn. Lots to get to. So with that, I'd like to introduce Mark Weinstein. Associate Director for Exchanges at Global Ties US. Hey, Mark, how are you this morning? Good, thanks, Elizabeth. Good to see you. Thanks so much. And Mark, I'm going to let you take it away. All right. Thank you, Elizabeth. Well, it's great to be here with everyone today celebrating the PAC USA Virtual Classroom Exchange Program and all of the hard work our students have done. Uh, as Elizabeth mentioned, my name is Mark Weinstein, and I'm the Associate Director for Exchanges here at Global Ties US. And I'm gonna take just a few quick moments to tell you all about our organization and to provide an overview of the PAC USA Virtual Classroom Exchange Program. Global Ties US is a nonprofit organization based in Washington, DC. And for almost 60 years, we've worked to implement international exchange programs, bringing current and future leaders from around the world to communities throughout the United States. Global Ties US sits at the center of the Global Ties Network, which consists of more than 100 organizations ranging from small community-based members to multinational nonprofits. Our members serve as global hubs, connecting all 50 states and more than 40 countries around the world. Global Ties US also supports and implements a range of programs. We have five primary program areas, which are implemented through partnerships with the US Department of State. The International Visitor Leadership Program is the flagship public diplomacy program of the State Department. The Global Ties Network is responsible for implementing the IVLP in communities throughout the United States. We are part of a consortium creating the U.S. Pavilion Experience at Expo 2020 in Dubai, working with our network to recruit student ambassadors and curate cultural programs for Expo attendees. The Police Professionalization Exchange Program is a hybrid in-person virtual exchange program that builds capacity of law enforcement agencies in Mexico. The Water Smart Engagements Program is another hybrid exchange program that supports uh, water utilities in select cities in Southeast Asia. And then finally, we also implement a range of exchange programs from, funded by US public affairs sections, including from the US embassies in Brazil, Iraq, and Pakistan, uh, which brings us to the PAC-USA virtual exchange program. This is an innovative exchange program funded by the US embassy in Islamabad. Uh, through this program, we have nearly 300 students from across the two countries. In Pakistan, our students are drawn from five different high schools from the cities of Lahore and Karachi. And then in the United States, we have six participating high schools from four different metropolitan areas across the country, from Washington, D.C. to Washington State. Our program consists of a three-month curriculum that was designed on the topic of cross-cultural conflict resolution. And we deliver this curriculum using a wide, way, wide array of online platforms, including Google Classroom, Padlet, Flipgrid, Facebook, and other tools. The project was originally intended to culminate in a two-week in-person exchange program for the United States for selected Pakistani students, but unfortunately, we had to cancel that component of the project due to the global pandemic. The curriculum was developed with a project-based learning model culminating in capstone projects. As part of their capstone project, the students were challenged to identify cross-cultural conflict in their communities, to design interventions to transform these conflicts, and to develop storyboards and short videos to present their ideas. So we're here today to view some of those videos. 
Uh, before we get to that, I want to take a moment just to thank some of the organizations that helped us implement this project. We've worked with a strong team of partner organizations on the PACUSA Virtual Exchange Program. In Pakistan, we partnered with an organization called Beyond the Classroom, and you'll be hearing more from them in a little bit. And then on the US side, we partnered with three of our member organizations, the World Affairs Council of Cincinnati, Northern Kentucky, Global Ties Kansas City in Kansas City, Missouri, and the World Affairs Council in Seattle, Washington. Uh, it's been great working with all of those partners and of course with the embassy. Um, so with that, I'm gonna hand the microphone back to Elizabeth and next we'll see some of the students work on the project. Thanks, Mark. Now let's get to see the program in action. At the start of the exchange, students got to know each other by creating videos about themselves and their daily trip to school. Here are two stellar examples of this activity from our students. Hello everyone, my name is Sanya and I'm 14 years old. I'm studying in Karachi High School in year 9 levels and my hobbies are to play basketball and throw ball and to even read books. Um, in my family, I have five members including me, my mother, my father, my elder brother and my grandmother. So about my house, I live in a flat uh, which have three rooms. So here I am to, uh, to tell you about my journey to school. So yeah, let's go. already in my uniform for my school and my van is waiting outside so yeah let's go okay so now i walked out of my house and i'm going towards my van which is just parked right in front of me and yeah that's my van so let's get into it we sat and now our journey starts so while we are on our way you will get to see bikes parked on street people walking for their work and shops are closed as it's early morning and hardly any shop is open at this time as it's 6 30 a.m Head in our journey, we will see a lot of garbage which I don't like about Karachi and I want it to be cleaned uh, and healthy environment for people and people should throw their garbage into bins. So my van looks from inside and it's a pretty big van and children can comfortably sit. Now again you can see sewage water which is on street which again is not good and it is a way of spreading disease. road called Ayi Chimika Road where they are all plants and this one is Habib Pan which was the tallest building of Pakistan but now it's not and there are many more buildings smaller than this uh, for example I think tower made by Bahia people go towards our school let's talk about it and uh, I study Karachi High School which I feel very lucky about because this is one of the schools which gives a lot of opportunities to their students to show their talents with their singing or any other activities. My favorite subjects are maths, Islamiyat and science and now you can see that we are going towards a new building and that's our new building which has striped colorful uh, paint on it and it's very beautifully made it's the new one and now we are going towards the younger towards my old school building which was my pre previous school building but now it's for junior classes and here you can see that children are wearing yellow clothes because they have the canteen day which is a kind of a fun day for us and towards my new school building which is newly made and it is just a little ahead of the old school building and this one is also very pretty very beautiful and uh, you can see it's on the right hand side and it's very 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 beautiful and that's the go blue campaign that we did and yeah so now we are just going towards my school and this was my journey to my school i hope you guys like it bye bye Hi, my name is Sam and I'm 15. I live with my dad and one of my brothers. I have three older brothers though, and I live in a medium-sized house. I have my dad drive me to school every day. Most students just ride the bus to drive or walk since it's a small town. I guess what I like most about school is getting to talk to my friends and learning about subjects that I'm actually interested in. 
My favorite subject has got to either be math or language arts though. Outside of school, I usually just do homework and talk to friends. I don't play any sports, but I do like singing and in my spare time, I've been learning piano. Bye now. Wow, so cool to see a snapshot of high school life in both the US and Pakistan. I now have the pleasure of introducing Marsha Outlaw, Assistant Cultural Affairs Officer at the US Embassy Islamabad. Hey, Marsha, how are you? I'm doing great, how are you? I'm doing great too, I'm so glad you could join us. And I'm gonna turn uh, the live stream over to you now. Thanks, Elizabeth. Hello and greetings from the US Embassy in Islamabad. I wanna say a warm thank you to Mark Weinstein, Global Ties US, and Beyond the Classroom for conducting the very first embassy-sponsored virtual classroom exchange. I also wanna convey my sincere congratulations to all the participants for successful completion of the program. This virtual classroom exchange program has been a very important project for us at the US Mission to Pakistan. It has provided a great opportunity for us to not only help Pakistani students develop and strengthen skills that will serve them well professionally as well as personally, but also allowed us to bring Pakistani and American students together in partnership to address important issues in our communities here. We strongly believe that cultural identity, cross-cultural communication, and intercultural conflict resolution are the foundational skills from which Pakistani youth can become more informed, effective, and active citizens, as well as continue working with us, with the US, in, in our mutual goal of preventing violent extremism. The hands-on experience that you've gained in these areas will also help you all as you continue your academic careers and later start your professional ones. Believe me when I say you'll be leaps and bounds ahead of your future colleagues in regards to communication and cultural understanding, two skills that will definitely help create a successful future. You may or may not have realized it, but through your participation in this virtual classroom exchange, you were not only developing those leadership skills I mentioned, but you were also acting as cultural ambassadors giving American students the rare opportunity to learn about Pakistan firsthand. And in doing so, you probably dispelled myths that some Americans have about Pakistan and its people. Now we're gonna ask you to do a little role reversal and act as cultural ambassadors for the United States here in Pakistan, sharing what you've learned about Americans, real Americans, not the stereotypical versions often portrayed in TV and in the movies. We ask that you share that experience widely with your family, friends, and community so that they too may benefit from the special opportunity you've all been given. Now that you've had this amazing experience, you may be asking yourself, what next? Well, there's two important things we urge you to do. First, stay in touch with your faculty, students, administrators and friends that you've made during this virtual exchange. Because of your shared experience, those friends and contacts will be invaluable in helping shape you into the leaders that we know that you will become. Second, don't stop now. Put to use that energy and excitement generated through this program by joining our local chapter, a local chapter of the Pakistan US Alumni Network, also known as PWAN. As alumni of an exchange program, you are eligible to join PWAN, which is the largest alumni network the U.S. government sponsors, which has over 25,000 members in 13 chapters throughout the country. PWAN organizes a number of conferences, reunions, and other activities aimed at such lofty goals as tackling challenging social problems, strengthening the communities of PWAN alumni, and in general, building a stronger, more resilient Pakistan and region. But also, it's just great fun. You get to meet others who've participated in different exchange programs and draw upon that vast network when, as you continue your academic careers and later when you join the professional world. All of this is available to you as alumni, but you must actively register with PWAN to be eligible for the activities. We also urge you to seek out and pursue other exchange opportunities through the U.S.-Pakistan Partnership. 
You can get more information about those opportunities through our Facebook page and through Puan itself. Lastly, I just want to wish you good luck with your presentations and with your continued efforts to strengthen your communities and the country. You are the future of Pakistan, and it's a bright and promising one. Congratulations once again, everyone. Thank you so much for sharing your insightful remarks, Marsha. As the virtual exchange went on, students dove into examining intercultural conflict. Let's check out some of their ideas for how to address a specific intercultural issue. So today, the conflict that I will be highlighting is the conflict that occurs between women empowerment in Pakistan. There's something really common here. It starts off with the background of the society setting mindsets of every single one that a man can be the only head of the family and he has complete dominance over everything. Women have no right to question back, nor their control over their life decision. This ideology has been going on for quite a long while now. This, the most recent step to neutralize this idea was a movement called Aurat March, Aurat meaning women. Now, this movement supported the idea of feminism and raising the voices of women and the old person rights are to be brought forward. Their lives cannot be controlled by anyone. Rather, they should have their own control over their life decision and keeping in mind the religious rules. It was, of course, started off by the woman population. But honestly, no matter how much attention they gained this year, it wasn't effective at all. Discussing personal home problems and fighting over it is not women empowerment, but rather working together for rights is surely one. Clearly, bring harmony in this movement and remove the not necessary extremism, mature yet professionally handle the movement, fighting for women's rights, and not back up until a good response is given. It will be a home run for all the women and success as well. Thank you so much. An action taken against policing in America would be something like Black Lives Matter, which was orchestrated by Alicia Garza, Opal Tometi, and Patrice Cullors. And the whole point is just simply to say Black Lives do matter, and they are against systemic racism and violence. And I think it, it has been effective, but they haven't reached their goal yet. And I think this is because they need to include everyone so that all parts of America are affected. And a new intervention would just simply to be get everyone involved, people in power of all different races, so everyone understands After seeing those, all I can say is that we have some really smart and talented students in our midst. Without further, further ado, I'd like to introduce someone who has truly embodied the spirit of collaboration and partnership that this exchange seeks to foster, Musa Tariq from Beyond the Classroom. Hey, Musa how are you? Hi, Elizabeth. I'm good. How are you? Thank you I'm for doing introducing. I'm great. You're so welcome. And I will let you take the floor. Take it away. All right, thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Muzammil. I've been working on the virtual exchange pro uh, program alongside Elizabeth on the Pakistani side. Um, a little background about Beyond the Classroom, which is BTC. Um, we started about three to four years ago with a handful of schools and with the vision to show that multiple perspectives and um, learning more than just books was uh, really essential for students. Um, as things evolved, as uh, the company transitioned, we grew more, uh, more schools came on board. There were more students that wanted to participate with us in different activities and different events. Um, as the vision evolved, so did our um, skill set and so did our um, priorities. We started uh, emphasizing more on empathy, leadership, critical thinking, um, getting students to think for themselves outside the box was one of the main ideas of Beyond the Classroom at that time. Um, over the past three, four years, Beyond the Classroom has worked with over um, 150 schools all over Pakistan and is now working with uh, schools from the US as well, uh, alongside Global Ties US. Um, we work with over 40,000 students from uh, Pakistan alone. Um, all of those have a different impact uh, been impacted differently through our different programs, which are most international, uh, most nationally, and a few international one as well. Um, one of the best things that um, <coughs> brings me closer to beyond the classroom is the fact that um, there was a cry, an outcry from students that their curriculum was mainly consisting of just root learning and you know a lot of memorizing um, books 
memorizing paragraphs, just getting the right answers, just getting the right grades. And Beyond the Classroom created this uh, curriculum, which gave them experiential learning programs in which they would participate in different games, in different events, in different um, activities that would help them gain knowledge, gain skills that would help them be uh, grow as a human being and that would uh, grow their empathy, grow their critical thinking. And for me, Beyond the Classroom has um, done that not only with students, but also with myself. So um, that was a little uh, introduction on what Beyond the Classroom has been and uh, has done with a lot of students. And um, I'll bring it back to Elizabeth for now. OK, and I think, Musimo, you are also going to introduce the finalist Pakistani videos, right? Yep. Fantastic. So, I would love, I would, could you just give us a few words about the content of the student video contest, what students did when they were preparing uh, their videos for submission? Uh, yes. So um, for, the, uh, for the students that were participating in the video contest, uh, all of them had to come up with a conflict resolution, um, anything that was uh, a problem in their society that they could cater to, that they could uh, think into, they could either work alone or they could work in a group and then address one of the problems in their society. Uh, after addressing them, they, they would also have to come up with a solution, a workable, sustainable solution that could actually solve the problem for itself. All of this being done in under 90 seconds with while collaborating with um, two or three of their friends or doing this alone. I think that was just something that I've never done as a child. And the, to see that the students got to do this, it was amazing. I'm so happy with their responses. And it's so flattering to see that they have so much creativity instilled in them. And they have so many ideas that are viable, that are feasible, that, that can be used. Uh, it just blew my mind away. Same and here, I know. Agreed. It was, it was actually beautiful to see all of them work together and brainstorm on this and get so many different ideas, not even one coinciding with another. And with that, do you want to introduce the finalist videos and then we'll go through and actually premiere them on this on our live Facebook stream? Yes, definitely. Let's get to it. Um, the first finalist video is from Bilal Najaf, Emil Noor, and Shayan Abid. The second one is from Ranisha. The third one is Beenish Mahmood, Muhammad Hamza, Josefa Imran, and Sayyid Zubair Aftab. Fourth one is from Sayyid Huzefa Hassan, Sayyid Ahmed Raza, Noor Ali, Abdullah Karimi, and Abdullah Amir. The last one is from Ramin Asim. Fantastic. And with that, I think we're going to transition to actually getting to see these works of art, really. Sweepers and gutter cleaners are being shunned and ostracized, treated with bias in an unjust and inhumane way. This profession is practiced by lower caste people who converted to Islam. This behavior caused them to have an equitable society that lacks empathy, inclusion, and humanity. The sweepers and gutter cleaners are mostly impacted. The politicians, general public, and sweepers would be the most helpful in solving this conflict. I will communicate with them through social media, print media, and personal interaction for raising awareness. The steps needed to bring about change are that we will have to make an online community against people disrespecting sweepers and gutter cleaners. We will have to raise our voices for them through social media. Our community will pick some great writers to write letters to the government about introducing a new law against violence to protect sweepers and gutter cleaners. The measurable effect of my work will be the number of views, likes and comments on the video uploaded, different kinds of supportive comments and the positive changes in governments and politics regarding minorities. The long-term change I hope we will bring about is that one day people regardless of their caste, background and professions associated with particular castes are treated in an equitable, just and humane way, just like the rest of the society. Please help people around you who are being abused or discriminated. The sources are four videos I found from YouTube and two articles which are written by Amal Aslam and Zahid Hussain. Hey everybody, this video revolves around indigenous people and our intervention idea for the intercultural conflict. 
The indigenous community refers to the people who still uphold their pre-invasion traditional values, Punjabi, Sindhi, Balochi, etc. are the main ones in Pakistan. Preserving and respecting and assimilating indigenous cultures adds diversity and riches to humanity. If we do not st stop keeping a blind eye towards it, the world would lose its linguistic, intellectual, and cultural diversity and identity. Emil Noor, Bilal Najib, and Shyan Abid are planning on organizing an intersectional play at our school. Our school organizes an annual play every year. This time we would be the host introducing students to the intercultural conflict and making them realize the importance of accepting and supporting each one of them. We would not only implement the idea through the play but also presentations and speeches that would paint the intervention. And this all would be managed under the guidance of our drama teacher. The final competition would be considered a cultural event at our school with traditional art, music, dances, and we, everyone would get a chance to speak for the rights of indigenous people, starring the school PNL staff members who are truly part of the indigenous community. Would break the stereotypes attached to the culture. And students would affirm that one should feel pride standing for their culture. It would bridge the gap between dominant and indigenous cultures. Hello everyone and assalamu alaikum. My name is Rami Nasim and I am the student of the first virtual classroom. So today I will be discussing the conflict that I've chosen for this program which is that transgenders are unemployed. Yes, a major part of them is unemployed and it does not only affect them but it also affects the economy of our country. Transgenders are disowned by their families at a very young age. So they do not have anyone to ask for money. They usually beg on the streets or either do something which is ethically or religiously wrong. In order to stop this from happening, we should start employing them. Nowadays, you will see many educated transgender individuals, but they're still not hired because of their identity. Out of 10,000 transgender individuals, only one is employed and there are above 50,000 transgender individuals in Pakistan. The government should take action against the workplaces or the companies who do not hire transgender individuals. The transgender individuals should be given a right and a helpline so that they can complain to the government if any workplace rejects them. Let's spread this message of peace and equality. Thank you. And I think now we will see the last two submissions for the Pakistani video, for the student video contest on the Pakistani side. My name is Ranisha Zafar and I am trying to solve a conflict that is the right of equal education to girls. Mostly in my community, the parents don't allow their girls to go outside for studying and usually the system of education is improper. To resolve this conflict, first I have to convince the parents to educate their 
Dear girls and the government to make some schools and hostels free where the girls should be educated. In some societies nearly about 22.8 million of girls not go to school so we have to give equal opportunities to everyone whether a girl or boy. Measurable effects of my work to my community will be the proper mental health and investing in the educating of girls bring high returns in terms of breaking cycles of poverty and aiding economic growth but it also improves children and women's survival rates and health the women rights are human rights wow i'm excited to follow that impressive display of conflict transformation videos from our pakistani students by introducing the finalist videos from our u.s students first we're going to see lauren's finalist video this will be followed by lexi and maddie's film last but not least we'll see taj and pierre's finalist video enjoy Fowler, and I'm going to be talking about the conflict in police brutality and superiority. My name is Lauren Fowler. Who are the key stakeholders and how will I reach them? Most of the mistreatment goes toward Black people, but we want everyone to give the support because we're practically all involved. To get in touch, I call or use social media, preferably Facebook. What steps are needed to bring about change? Getting started is a huge one. Once you start, you can keep going and actually get somewhere. I want us to get somewhere, somewhere that is beneficial for us all. Never let a stumble on the road be the end of the journey. What actions need to take place for the conflict resolution to occur? We would really need everyone hopeful and determined to actually feel strongly about the change we're trying to bring forth. We need to bring this horrible reality into the eyes of everyone. What will the measurable effects of your work be in your community? There is no effect if nothing has changed. Something that would be effective would be if we got support from the police on this. Some of us actually fear the police, and the police know that, and yet police brutality and abuse still happens. They abuse that power of knowing that they scare us, knowing that we feel threatened. I'm not saying that every cop is dirty. I'm just saying that so far I believe they've lost our trust. Trust is earned. We need to be able to rely on them, but they need to figure out a way to clean up their mess. What is the long-term change you see as your goal? America is huge, and fixing some of my country's problems is a big start. But my country isn't the only community that could use amends. This needs to go international because other countries suffer too. Watch this. Read this. It's called... It's on Netflix, it's called When They See Us. It gets deep, it could really open one's eyes. Conclusion, in the future, we don't have to be let down or killed or feel small because of our skin, gender, maybe the lack of power, anything. We can feel all feel comfortable together as our equal. Hi, I'm Maddie, this is Lexi, we're partners. We couldn't figure out how to both talk at the same time and quarantine so we can't be together. Um, one problem in our county is that there's a lot more development and like a lot more businesses and shopping centers and stuff are going up which is changing the dynamic of the county. We used to be like all farm and it was like, there's little mom and pop businesses and stuff, but a lot of places like farmland and like little businesses are being overtaken by big change and stuff. These chains have made the cost of living here increase, which increases like house prices and like everything here is more expensive than it used to be because the quality of living has gone up. And also farmlands and stuff are being taken and like used for other uses that aren't farms. So just the dynamic has changed. People most impacted by this are farmers as well as like county residents and little mom and pop businesses who possibly can go out of business if they're ever taken by chains. Um, we can, we can reach key stakeholders through open communication regarding the subject, raising awareness. Um, there's not much that we can go back and change, but we can prevent stuff from happening in the future. Um, we can raise awareness to people who need to know more about this issue, and we could just help our county and help everyone who lives here and, like, make it better than it used to be and, like, make sure people are aware of these issues and try and change stuff and people want to make the changes for the better. A problem or conflict in our community is racial profiling, which is the act of being suspicious or targeting someone due to their skin color. Our key stakeholders will be everyone. We will reach out to them by using PSAs to ensure that everyone will see them. All right, steps that are needed to bring about change will be an effective racial profiling policy that includes procedures to eliminate the influence of improper bias. This means that this means that officers are required to explain why they pulled over the driver as soon as possible. Steps that are needed for the resolution to occur will be that uh, we can try to pass levies or try to contact the police department. 
One is um, what is the measurable effect? The measurable effect of our solution is it's going to um reduce the number of times people get pulled over, stopped, or questioned just because based on the color of their skin. And what is the long term effect? Long term effect would have to be on the lines of um, it bring the community closer, more united, and stand stand together as a one um one community and not feel like it's just one group of people that's getting targeted. We'll all be happy, and nobody has to worry about going outside and being questioned just because they're different skin color. Now, for the moment we've all been waiting for, Hana Tariq from Beyond the Classroom is going to join us in one moment. And she's here to announce the winners of the PAC USA Student Video Contest. Hey, Hana, how are you? Hi, Elizabeth. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Are you ready for the most anticipated moment of this live stream? Yes, I am excited. It's nice to see the work that's going on, and uh, I'm just overwhelmed. <laughs> All right, I will let you take it away then. Thank you. Um, firstly, I think it was um, a video where beyond what anyone expected did, did an amazing job to touch upon these concepts that people on the way to be working with to understand what sort of uh, ideas we come up with to tackle the problem. Um, I think that was very beautifully done. It was very wholesome to see all the videos. Um, both um, on the Pakistani and the US side, the videos were evaluated by experts in conflict resolution. And um, the results were matched between different um, people who were judging it. And the idea was to make it as unbiased as possible. So a lot of people got together to do this. Um, without waiting anymore, I think it's about time that we announce it. So for from Pakistani's videos, um, the first one goes to Beanish, Hamza Mahmood, Huzefa, Sayyid Zabair, Aftab. And from the US, it goes to Lauren Fowler. So hats off to you both. Um, amazing work done. I like how you guys were coming up with realistic solutions that can be implemented in your very own community. And the change starts from there. Um, coming to the next one, our runners up from in uh, from uh, Pakistan and from US. From Pakistan first, um, Emil Noor, Bilal Najaf, and Shayan Abed. Um, you worked on indigenous people and the whole idea of including media and arts to bring about a change is beautiful. To start from your own school is even more beautiful than that. Um, runners up on um, the US side. We have Taj and Peer who worked on racial profiling, one of the very, very important, um, I think, conflicts that goes on something that um, I don't think so. It's just in US. It's all around the world. We really need to think about it. Um, so once again, hats off to you guys. Um, I wish you the best. I hope some of this comes into more meaningful outcomes. Uh, you pursue this, you hold on to the knowledge that you have, and you keep that connection between Pakistan and U.S. going on, even after this project. Well, congratulations to all of the winners, and a big congratulations and thank you to the students and teachers that participated in the U from the U.S. and Pakistan. You're really what made this program a success. And now, in closing, I'd like to bring on Dr. Catherine Brown, President and CEO of Global Ties US. Hey, Catherine. I can't hear you right now. I was muted. Ah, <laughs> hey, well, great to I'm see so you. Glad I can see you. Hey, great to Hi. see you as well. Thank you and, so uh, much for joining us. Oh, thanks so much. This has been a really inspiring way to start my day. And I just wanted to say hello to all of you, congratulate all the winners, um, and, and to all of you for being part of this transformative project. Pakistan USA Virtual Classroom illustrates the power of virtual exchanges to keep the vital work of international exchange and public diplomacy going during this incredibly challenging time when global travel is, is impossible. And uh, Pakistan is a country that has meant so much to me in my career. Uh, and Lahore and Karachi are two of my favorite cities in the world. And I'm so happy that those of you from there have been able to connect with your peers in Seattle, in Kansas City, and in Louisville with members of our Global Ties Network. Uh, we know that this program has been 
has been incredibly powerful and important to all of you and, and deeply meaningful. And we're thrilled to hear such feedback as we got from one of the Pakistani students that the program was approached with love and care and um, that you felt that you were supported uh, through um, you, that you were supported and that you really enjoyed your experience. And so we believe, we're thrilled to hear that because we believe strongly that international exchange is, is transformational. And I was uh, your age in high school when I first uh, started my um, exchange program journey and, and it led to my career and wanting to as much as possible around the world. And so I encourage all of you to stay connected. Uh, uh, for those of you in Pakistan, stay connected with the US Embassy there through their Facebook page. And for those of you from um, American cities, stay connected with your um, local member organization, the World Affairs Council of Seattle, Global Ties Kansas City, and the World Affairs Council of, of Northern Kentucky. Uh, I want to thank um, especially the U.S. Embassy in Pakistan and Beyond the Classroom for helping us put together such a fantastic dynamic program. Um, at, here at Global Ties U.S., we'll continue to pioneer virtual exchanges and uh, ensure uh, that they're part of uh, our future in-person exchange programs once those can resume. So thank you so much. Congratulations again to the winners and to all of you for putting so much time and thought and energy into this project. And I wish my um, Fellow Americans, a happy Memorial Day weekend. And for all of you in Pakistan, Ramadan Mubarak. Thank you.